Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of The Art of Photography. My name is Ted Forbes. Today we are continuing on in our website little series here. And I want to talk about photography websites and what I want to do today is look at some actual tools that you can use to get started with, um, assuming you're going to build a photography website. Now, what I want to say, just to give you a little preamble here, is we're living in a day and age where using the internet as a medium to reach potential customers, other photographers, um, you know, whatever it is that you do and want to do with your photography, it really is easier and more affordable than it's ever been in the history of the world to promote yourself in whatever you're doing. And I think photography is no different. Um, Specifically, we're going to be talking about tools and solutions that are geared towards photographers. Um, there are a number of platforms, um, social, uh, blog-wise, you know, portfolio-wise, etc. And today what we're going to do is I'm going to gear these towards people um, that really have no sense of how to code or build a website or do anything. So these are kind of like off-the-shelf things that you can just get, put your stuff into, and they're going to be great. Uh, personally, a little disclaimer, I'm a big WordPress fan. Um, I have been for years. I also know how to do my own coding. A little bit and so I know that not everybody is comfortable with that so before we jump into WordPress and some stuff like that in later episodes what I want to do is right now I want to talk about some solutions that you can use to just off the shelf right now where you don't have to know any coding at all if you can basically work a web browser you can do these and I think this is a really important thing because not everybody has their head around coding or wants to. I think there's another side to this too because I have been in this position before even though I've even worked as a developer that even though I do know how to code, that's one more thing I have to do. And sometimes if you're building a portfolio or a website, you know, make it easier on yourself. If you can cut some steps and take a few shortcuts and just get something out there and get it going, that's not a bad thing. So hopefully this will be useful for everybody. So let's go on over to the computer and I want to show you a couple solutions for, you know, tools and such that you can use to build a website very quickly without knowing any code or anything like that. So come on over, let's have a look. Okay, so um, today we are going to talk about content management systems for building websites, and we're going to look at some solutions today, and th this, this, these are particularly designed for people who do not have any knowledge or experience with coding. You just want to get a website up and go, and so I'm going to show you some services that allow you to do that. A few of these are paid, a few of these are free. Um, I'll talk about pros and cons, and you know, sometimes these are helpful even to people who do like to code, um, because they cut to the chase and allow you just to focus on your website and not coding. Um, one thing you do want to do, no matter what you choose, is you want what is known as a content management system. And content management systems, any website that needs to be sustainable, in other words, you're going to actually keep it updated, needs to have a content management system. Otherwise, you're coding and not putting content up, and it'll be too hard. So like the days are over of getting a copy of Dreamweaver and shredding around and putting you know, static HTML pages up. It's just, it's it's not efficient and you don't need to do it. There are plenty of things out there. And I'm gonna show you a few of them. The first one I guess I'll start with, let's start with the king here, which is Squarespace. Now I wanted to give a full disclosure here that Squarespace are a show sponsor. They are not sponsoring this episode. I'm just sharing their service with you because I really do think it is that good. Uh, they're not paying me for this placement. I am just doing this on my own. Um, and that's because I really do think they have something that works. And Squarespace really are the king. When you sign up for Squarespace, um, I do have a website on here for our composition stuff that we do, the compositionstudy.com. And just so you can see the back end, I've logged in. And this is how easy it is to to create pages, sort, rearrange, create a blog. They have what they call blocks or widgets, and I will do a whole series. Actually, I've already filmed a lot of them, um, and we'll put these somewhere online so you guys can see them, but I have some tutorials on Squarespace um, that show you how easy this is to do. It keeps its own analytics for you, so you can you know check out your traffic and see who's visiting your site. Um, and the other thing, too, is that, let's see, let's go down to um, the themes on here. Um, and what's really, really cool about this, here it is, templates is what they call it. Um, if you go to templates, they, you know, they actually hire graphic designers. They do a wonderful job. They're very design focused and very design minded. So you can start with templates that are already pre-built. You can customize them. And if you do know how to code, you can even add more to them. But uh, I think for an off the shelf solution, Squarespace is really the best. The other thing I like about Squarespace and the reason I tend to recommend it is because it is kind of an open system. And by open system, I mean, you know, if you 
you already have a site in WordPress and you want to move it to Squarespace, you can import websites right into Squarespace. It'll just suck in your website and adapt it to the new template. You might have to go clean up a few little things, but for the most part, it works. The other thing I like, and this is what makes it open for me, is if you decide you don't want to use Squarespace anymore, um, it does allow exporting of your website, which is very nice too. So you can you, you own your content. What you're doing from them is you're paying for the content management system, uh, some of the template design, and and the service. You know they'll host it for you. You can even get your domain name through here. So you know bobsmith.com or whatever your name is, you can you know. You, know, you can get your photography site set up and running in a matter of minutes. So Squarespace is great. Um, I can save you some money because they do sponsor some of our shows, but um, I'm going to make you actually go look that up because it, the code changes month to month. Uh, but if you go to iTunes, and I'll put a link below, if you um, watch some of the shows on iTunes, um, I do give the sponsor codes in there. So anyway, check that out, and I will have some actual tutorials because I really do love Squarespace. I'm not just saying that because they're a sponsor. They they are genuinely awesome, and I am proud to be a sponsor of Squarespace. I think they're they're great. Um, let's look at some other options. Um, Squarespace do cost money. They have a free trial. You don't need a credit card. You can just go check it out if that's what you want to do. Um, but it, it is does end up being a subscribed service. Um, another one that is a subscription-based service that I think has turned things around a little bit and made their service a little cooler is Smug Mug. Um, Smug Mug, uh, typically, it kind of started as this way of like having space to put all your photos and some videos. Uh, it was kind of like Flickr, but it, you know, you could choose whether it was public or not. Um, and it was really geared toward more towards professional photographers. You could put bigger files up. And they, it, one point kind of had some little web design templates and they just weren't that great and so people would literally you know i'd get emails from folks saying hey i have a smug mug account um you, you know uh what do you think of them as a web service and i just didn't care for them they have changed that um they have started to do this in a lot cooler way now you go sign up for an account um they'll have a free trial in here but this is a paid service as well but it's worth it. Uh, you can see some of their site templates in here. The typography is kind of interesting. Everything has a very modern feel to it. And it's geared towards photographers. And they have turned around with, with what you're able to do as far as making this a website. Once again, you can get a domain name. You can sign up here. Um, once again, this is a paid service, but it works and it is very nice. So, you know, this Squarespace, if you don't want to mess with the coding, there may be a couple advantages to using SmugMug over Squarespace in that if you deal at all with selling stock photography or you want to sell stock photography, um, you can have image storage and there's some stuff that's more integrated towards that um, within SmugMug. So, you know, Squarespace kind of builds a great website and has a, an incredible, the best content management system out there. It's all drag and drop. I mean, if you can drag and drop images into a browser window and, and sort them, you can do it. <laughs> you know, it's that easy. Uh, where SmugMug probably adds a few more features beyond just being a content management system. So both these are worth checking out. Go, go sign up for the free trial, see what they're all about and see if this is something that might work for you. I'm gonna show you some free options if you really don't have any money, it does not require a whole lot of money to build a website. You know, you can do it fairly inexpensively. Um, but Tumblr is another option that does pretty well. And I have a little Tumblr account that I set up a long time ago, and I don't use all that much. Um, but uh, I was thinking about doing a behind the scenes blog at one point. So this isn't even updated, but this is it. Um, Tumblr is more like a blog platform. Um, it integrates into social media. So what's nice about Tumblr is, is if you do want to do something on Tumblr, you're very restricted in the types of like, you know, how big an image it's going to save on the back end and what your stuff does. But Tumblr has some awesome things going for it in that already it has social media integration in here. So people who use Tumblr a lot, um, you can follow people and, and, you know, it has that social networking vibe and component to it. So that is actually a big pro for using Tumblr, um, actually. Um, I was have a random smattering of images. Some of these are from New York. Uh, you can do auto posting. Like we talked about mobile photography and I'm literally posting straight to Tumblr. It's just feeding out of Flickr or Twitter or whatever. And so you can, you know, posting is as easy as using a mobile phone. This was actually posted on the airplane. I had the Wi-Fi connected and uh, took that shot out the window and put it online from an airplane. Amazing. It was slow as hell and expensive, but whatever. It worked. It was just to see if I could do it. Um, so Tumblr is a great option. It's more like a blog. It's going to be kind of a stream of content. Um, you're not going to be building portfolios in the same way or galleries that you would with SmugMug or Squarespace, but it does work. Um, I'm going to go over here and show you if you just Google Tumblr themes or you go to tumblr.com slash themes. Um, and, you know, Tumblr may be a good option because it's free, uh, whether you are going to use it for your main website or not. Maybe you do want to set up Tumblr just 
to get in there and, and have some stuff there and be able to integrate that into your marketing plan one day. I don't know. But these are all the Tumblr themes that are pre-built. You can build your own. There's code that you got to learn to do that. But, you know, some of them are free, some of them are paid. But there is a wide range of stuff in here that you can check out. And some of them are pretty cool as far as, you know, photography goes. They're, they show images big, beautiful, lots of really cool Swiss grid influence design some neat stuff. So Tumblr's one. Another one I would recommend is WordPress.com. Now, this tends to be very confusing to people. Um, WordPress basically is an open source content management system. So there's basically two flavors of WordPress. You can go to WordPress.com and just sign up and get a WordPress account and you have access to WordPress and WordPress hosts it. Um, and it's just, just as easy as Tumblr. You, you have a blog instantly, or if you use Blogger or something like that, that's where WordPress comes from. Uh, accounts are free. There's some paid upgrades for certain things. You know, once you start getting popular, if you want to host video or anything like that. And so WordPress.com isn't a bad idea, and it's not a bad way to go. They actually have a great service. Um, it's very reliable. But, and, it, and it starts free. You can do paid versions as you go from there. Um, I love WordPress, but I don't use WordPress.com. I prefer, and we'll do separate videos on this, and I actually have some already up, but uh, I prefer WordPress.org. If you go to WordPress.org, let's go ahead and I'll show you what that looks like. WordPress.org is more techy and more developer-y, but it allows you to just download WordPress. They give it away. It is free. And what I do is I host this myself. Um, you can get a web hosting company. It requires a little more setup, but it still works just fine. It's, it's my method of choice. I'm a huge WordPress fan. Um, you just get a hosting account, um, hook up your domain name. You have to know a minimal amount of tech stuff, which we can cover on, on some episodes here. I won't do it today, but uh, you can download WordPress, upload it to your blog, set up the database, and you are blogging away or building a website or whatever it is you need to do. I've used WordPress for years, and I just really love it. It's very flexible. It works for me. It's open source, which is beautiful because it basically means that they don't charge for it. So... I know that may be confusing, but there's two flavors of WordPress. Just notice that. It's the same software, but do you want to host it yourself or do you want just the simple WordPress will host it for you? Either work. I think you have a little more flexibility, a little more options with WordPress.org. If you come from a developer or a coding background, and if you do, you probably don't need me telling you this, but WordPress.org does allow you to customize and build plugins, and there's a lot more you can do when you host it yourself. But, you know, you can certainly use WordPress.com as well. So anyway, just to recap, go sign up for something. Go sign up for a couple things. Just try them. See what you think. Um, you can hook your own custom domain name up to any of these. And by domain name, I mean tedforbes.com or whatever it is that you know you want to use for your URL. All of these accept custom domain names, and you can hook those up. So just to recap, um, you know, there's Squarespace. I think they're the kings. They really do offer, and I'm like I said, I'm a proud advertiser of them, but um, they offer one of the best content management systems, period, hands down. I really love what they do. Easy to use, just awesome. Um, another option for a lot of you guys um, that you know is probably worth it is looking into SmugMug, particularly if you need more options as far as like distributing um, really high quality images, uh, big images, stuff like that. If you need to be able to offer downloads to clients or stuff, you know, you might consider uh, SmugMug and giving that a try. So SmugMug is great as well. Um, and then the two free options I showed you, I will list all these in show notes as well, but Tumblr, which is free. Uh, you can pay for some themes if you want, but Tumblr's pretty pretty dang good. It has a built-in social media networking component to it. You probably ought to have a Tumblr account, whether or not you're gonna use it for your portfolio website or not, but uh, Tumblr's a great option. And then finally, you know, here's all your custom themes for Tumblr. We also have WordPress. There's two flavors of WordPress. The main one we talked about today was WordPress.com. It is hosted by Automatic, which is actually the company that owns WordPress. And uh, you can also download, and we'll talk about this in the next episode, probably, um, is you can go to WordPress.org, download WordPress, the core software, and run it on your own server. And that actually is my preferred way to go. Um, I've used it a million times over, and I just kind of use it for everything because I know it well. But anyway, any of these options will work. Um, the most important thing is that you have something. Your visitors won't know what platform you're using. They won't care. They're interested in your images and what you've got going on. And so what you need to do is go find something that, one, is comfortable for you to use. That's probably the single most important thing because if you're not going to update your website because there's a learning curve or something, you won't update it. I promise. It's That's just that's just how this works. <laughs> you know, I've run websites for years, and if, if, you, if you can't get into a groove, 
move of of making sure your content stays fresh then then pick a different content management system that's all i'm saying so first thing is, is you need to be comfortable the second thing is does it do what you need it to do so for instance tumblr might be a good solution because it is free but maybe you want to do a little more with galleries or you want to be able to add an online store or you want a client area or something like that and wordpress might be or excuse me tumblr might be difficult for you to manage a lot of that in if you don't know the need those things then tumblr might be just perfect same with wordpress so find something that you like for me wordpress.org where you download and run it on your own server sorry here it is um, that is the most flexible and comfortable for me um, squarespace is probably a close second and then tumblr and hosted wordpress being a third so anyway pick something that works for you and uh, that's what it is links are below Okay, so there's a few things that I hope get you going and uh, a few things that I hope you can use to your advantage to start building your portfolio out online. What we're going to talk about from here out is I want to get into the specifics of kinds of content we want to put on the website, um, how to go through and pick your portfolio, some tips on that. And so we're going to get into that in the next episode. But go ahead, if you're going to build a website, just go ahead and sign up for something now. Um, go ahead and get some stuff going and so you can start to experiment with that and just kind of see how it works. And like I said, there's a number of tools out there. Um, I really am a WordPress guy and that's just a personal preference of mine and we will cover some stuff on WordPress in future videos as we get going on here everything from theme development the reason I like WordPress is because uh, you know and I'm not talking about the wordpress.com which is hosted by WordPress I'm talking about hosting your own version of it uh, but I really like that because it gives me the most flexibility the most control um, I completely own all of my content and it just you know it's it's my center <laughs> online and so I prefer WordPress for that but these are some solutions that I have used before, I totally recommend. Uh, and like I said, you know, Squarespace, I think just have an amazing, amazing product. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. I think really for a lot of people, it may be the best solution out there in terms of there's no tech learning curve. You just dive right in and everything works. Uh, the other thing I really like about Squarespace is they do not control or own all your content. You can export it if you decide you don't want to use it one day, or you can import it if you are moving an existing site to WordPress or to Squarespace. And I think that's really important. Um, and Squarespace have an excellent product. And like I said, disclaimer, they do sponsor the show. They're not sponsoring this episode. Um, I'm simply recommending them because I love their product. And that's what I do with all sponsors. I do not, uh, I don't want to put my reputation on the line by recommending something that's not a good product. So anyway, just to tell you that that, you know, in all fairness, full disclosure, they do sponsor some shows, but uh, they, the important reason why I'm covering them today is because I really do like what they do and, and what their product is. So anyway, I hope that has helped some and uh, we'll carry on more with this next week. Once again, this has been another episode of The Art of Photography and thank you for watching. See ya.